should have waited until tomorrow to film this because I'm just having one of those days where you get ready, your hair's not cooperating, makeup's not cooperating, and everything's just off, which is never fun on a filming day. But my Wi-Fi is scheduled to be out all day today, so we need to just take advantage of that and film. Anyways, welcome back to another monthly reset video. This week we are resetting for March, which I can't believe March is already here. I really thought after quitting my corporate job and big four working in tax that this time of year was gonna go by really slow since I quit and I'm used to being insanely busy this time of year but I've honestly kept myself pretty busy obviously nowhere near as busy as I was then and let me know down below if you are like this but as far as my favorite time of year goes it's definitely the holiday season like Thanksgiving Halloween Christmas pretty much October to December but if we are only talking specifically about seasons I am a spring girl I come alive in the springtime and I feel like it's because my birthday is in April which is in the spring so let me know down below if your birthday happens to be during your actual favorite season not just time of year. In this monthly reset, we're going to be recapping February similar to how I did last month. I'm going to share with you all my March goals and setting up my doodle planner. And the fun little segment that I'm doing this month is a wish list segment. Your girl has been fighting so many urges to impulse spend. I've given into some things, but they've been things that I have quite literally had on my list for months. You all know I have the Shop Amanda Rachel Lee doodle journal. Absolutely love it. These are sold out. She does have a digital version, I believe, that you can still purchase. And I believe she's coming out with an undated version because I think I heard Jenna Long say that. So. so what I ended up doing for my February recap page, for each month there are some dotted bullet kind of journal pages. I like to use them as recap pages for the month. So for February's I just drew a bunch of pink and red hearts kind of in like a pattern and then overlaid with black marker. But the key things I wanted to note for February, I had 25,711 Instagram followers as of today, which today's the 27th. So February's almost over but not quite which is growth from last month because last month I hit 25.6k and I talked about how I have been in 25.4 25.5k jail for like forever so I'd love to see some growth even though it's slow I put the amount I saved this month which I'm so proud of how much I saved because I actually saved more than last month which I was not anticipating I had a lot of my brand deals and sponsorships that I had done in December and January come through this month so I was able to save a lot but obviously a lot of that is taxes I went to the on repeat playlist on Spotify to find the songs that I've been listening to on repeat and I have About You by the 1975 honestly one of my favorite songs ever Work Song by Hosier <laughs> Nobody Gets Me by SZA Afterglow by Taylor Swift and Ode to a Conversation Stuck in Your Throat by Delwater Gap those were mine at the top of the playlist I exercised 21 days this month which is great posted 17 times on Instagram I have 97,251 YouTube subscribers I think in the February reset video we had just hit 25.7 like while I was filming so we did gain some subscribers which is great to be in a net positive situation again after a month because I did talk about how for like literally pretty much the whole duration of while I was working my big four job which is so funny because I was like clinging to that thinking that it was going to gain me a following because I was being so relatable by making myself miserable in a corporate job that I didn't love meanwhile my negativity I think just really turned some people away which I think is valid I was just constantly losing subscribers and now I'm actually gaining them again. Conveniently today, the day I'm filming, um, our roof is also kind of getting fixed because there's a leak that's making our windows leak when it rains. I kind of just have to stop filming every couple minutes and start back up. Oh, perfect. So for my February goals, I did not read two books. I've been reading Air of Fire all month and I was reading it basically all of January. I kind of went through a slump with it and when we got home from our honeymoon up until like early February, I kind of just stopped reading it and wasn't really reading it all in general and I just wasn't feeling compelled to pick it up because I wasn't super into it. I really wanted to read the Kane Brothers series, which I know I talked about in last month's reset and I'm so sad I didn't read those around Valentine's Day because it's like a four book series, but I'm really glad I didn't put Air of Fire down because I think I would have have never even ended up finishing Air Fire if I would have picked up those books while I was reading Air Fire and then tried to go back to Air Fire. Up until the 15 to 20 percent mark on the Kindle when you're reading Air Fire was just not enjoyable in my opinion. It was just slow and a lot of new characters were getting introduced so I was just really confused because I would pick it up, I'd read a couple pages and then I'd put it down so then by the next time I pick it up I would have forgotten who the characters were that were already introduced. But I'm finally at a point where I'm like actually enjoying it and I'm really into it now and I'm really excited because I know after this book is when the rest of the series just like takes off and gets exponentially better. So I'm really excited and that's 
from the Throne of Glass series, if you did not know. I'm about 60% through with Air Fire now, so I'm hoping to finish it this week. I did not match my January bookings when it came to brand deals, but I did have a really good month when it came to bookings, so I'm still proud of myself. And honestly, it was a little ambitious for me to try and match what I booked in January, just because January was such like an outlier month for me in terms of how good of a month it was. But regardless, I am just beyond blessed and so thankful that I have been having an amazing Q1. Because in January and February so far, I've already booked over half of what I booked all of last year. And normally on YouTube as like a content creator and even on Instagram, Q1's just really slow for brands because it's the beginning of the year and typically Q4 is like where they focus a lot of their ad spend. So I'm just really thankful to have had a really great January and February so far and I hope to keep that trend up. I did not do anything social outside of my comfort zone. February was not a good social month for me. I just like didn't do anything. I'm kind of like going through it right now socially though. I talked about it in a vlog recently, just like my struggle with social anxiety lately. So I'm not gonna talk about it again here. If you wanna hear me talk more about that, it's in a recent vlog. But I'm also just trying to protect my peace in ways and that's kind of resulted in me almost isolating myself. I just feel like my social anxiety and just some things in my life have just made me feel a little bit wounded in the social realm so I'm just kind of not inclined to do anything. But we're gonna turn it around in March hopefully. I did do something socially like we went to a, an engagement party last weekend. In terms of me by myself doing something outside of my comfort zone and like trying to be more social I didn't do anything but there were a few social moments. I did not finish our thank you notes for the wedding, which is terrible. I really need to finish that. My husband's out of town right now. I'm out. He's out of town. I'm really going to try and finish them, which I don't know how I'm going to finish them because I have so many to do. It's just like looming over my head. I'm trying to be super intentional with them and there's just a lot to write. So I just need to be a lot more diligent about doing them daily. And I started filming our home series in terms of just like little B-roll clips and I'm so paranoid I'm going to accidentally delete one of them because I delete footage off my SD cards like 24-7. So I'm trying to be really careful about that, but I did not like start the home series in terms of posting it and I did not do a social media detox day. So you already know it's getting carried over to the March goals. So that's our February recap. Let's go ahead and get started with the March goals and setting up my doodle journal. So starting out with the first page of the doodle planner, I thought I knew what I was doing when it came to my colors. When I think of March, I really just think of green, defrosting, and plants, and flowers, and spring. So in a perfect world, this would have been a monochromatic spread of green, and it would have just been a bunch of different beautiful shapes of green, and I think that would have looked stunning, but given the fact that I have like 15 markers and I only have one green, we just had to make it work. I really love the way the left page of this turned out where I put my golds with the greens and the purples, and I should have kept it that way on this page, but I actually did this page first. Blue and the pink really just throw it off. Off, but I really think the green and purples looked amazing over here. But is it a doodle planner setup if I don't royally screw up the cover page of the month? So far, I am 0 for 3 on liking my cover pages. My February one wasn't terrible, but wasn't my favorite either. And I don't necessarily love this month's theme. Like, I love the whole plant idea, but as somebody who just doesn't have a ton of markers, it's just not that great. That's a spread, and I got all my goals in here, which we'll go over in a second. And then for the calendar setup, I actually liked how this one turned out. I don't know why I did the blue again. I should have just done the darker purple like I did on the other page. But I also incorporated the marigold color and I think that turned out really pretty. Once again, I'm not putting anything on the calendar really unless it's like traveling, which I do have a little bit of traveling and a holiday. So that's all I really filled out here. But I liked that I incorporated the marigold. I thought it was like a fun pop of yellow because I felt like there needed to be some kind of yellow in here, but the neon yellow wasn't really cutting it for me. It's just funny to me that I like thought this page looked so good with just the two purples and the green. And then I proceeded to incorporate pinks and blues on other pages and stuff where it just didn't make sense. For my habits this month, I chose reading, eating at home, sleeping more than seven hours, making coffee at home, drinking two bottles of water, which when I say bottles, I mean my awalas. I haven't been that good about drinking water lately, so I want to be better. I have less than one hour of screen time on social media specifically, but this is going to be hard to track because a lot of times I get on social media to draft things or to find like a sound to use for a reel, and that can take quite some time. It's going to be hard to actually track like how much scrolling based and then I'm getting ready for the day which that just means like putting on an outfit I feel good in and maybe like doing a little bit of makeup it doesn't have to be both cleaning something every day I like that because last month I did an evening tidy and that just felt like I was putting a lot of pressure on myself to like clean up every evening but if I just clean something every day I think that's a cool habit to track and then I have deleting old photos because your girl keeps running out of storage on her phone my contract for my phone did just end so basically like I can upgrade my phone now if I want to but it's so funny because every time when my phone contracts ends my phone just like literally either runs out of storage or it just like stops working after that two years is up so I'm really Really wanting a new phone because I want more storage. Not necessarily because I think there's anything wrong with my phone in terms of 
it being the 13 and not being as new. I don't really care about that. If they still sold 13 Pro Maxes, which I just found out they don't anymore, which is so stupid that they only do the Pro Maxes for like the current version and then the version right before, I would totally buy like the largest storage I could of 13 Pro Max if I could. I don't really want to be paying for another phone every month for two years again. So I'm finally now experiencing a lower phone bill after not having to, you know, be paying for the installments of this phone. With that being said, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I try every day to be in the habit of like searching one year ago in my photos on my phone and then I can just delete anything out from like a year ago that I don't need anymore. I end up hoarding so many photos and videos I don't really need. Getting into my goals for March, the very first one is to set up a spring cleaning agenda. So there's a few things that I really want to focus on in regard to spring cleaning that we don't typically do in our cleaning routine, such as going through our closets. I mean, cleaning out like our coat closet that we have in here and overall just like purging the closet. I really want to do one of the YouTube videos where you try on everything in your closet but I think I would need to buy three SD cards just for that video and it would be such a time-consuming video to film and it would make an absolute mess because trying on everything would just be a lot. I want to do things like cleaning the baseboards, cleaning out our dishwasher filter. I'm so scared to do that because I highly doubt the person who lived here before us ever did it and we haven't done it since we lived here which is gross. All that kind of stuff but then also do our typical cleaning and I really want to like take my car and go get it detailed and clean out my trunk because my trunk has so much junk in it. And then carried over from last month, I have to finish our thank you notes, which I know I already talked about, and also doing a social media detox day, and then filming our first home series video. Hopefully I can film it this month, but it totally depends on if I finish our living room and kitchen area in terms of decorating. There's a few more things I really want to get, but trying to like prioritize what we need most and not spend too much because we just had to pay a chunk of money to get our patio door replaced. Which hasn't happened yet, but will be happening soon. But I've been trying to look on Facebook Marketplace and also just go in resale stores when I'm like driving by them to see if I can find a little bistro dinette dining table that seats two for our little tiny, tiny little space we have in our kitchen for it. And once I can get one of those, I think I will be like pretty satisfied with how our downstairs is and that's going to be the first part of the home series video that i'm doing so as long as i can get one of those hopefully in the next month then i will be able to film the full video i really want to get ahead on content for our little vacation i'm taking later this month i say vacation because i'm just going back home to where i grew up to my parents house in panama city beach florida for my dad's birthday and also just to spend my mom's spring break since she was a teacher unfortunately griffin can't come with me because he's going to be studying for his CFP exam soon and that's going to be like consuming his life for the next couple months on top of working. So it'll just be me but I really want to get ahead on as much content as I possibly can for that week just so that I can enjoy my time there and not have to be like working all day long while I'm there. And the next one is to keep my plants alive. So if you saw in the intro of this video, which I'm sure you did, the little plants, I have a spath. The other plant is a Hoya, I believe, or Oya. I don't know how you pronounce it. We really just wanted something that would be low maintenance and would work in our low light situation for our home because we don't get any direct sunlight at all and also plants that would be pet friendly so those are the plants we ended up picking out and I want to keep them alive so far we're so good two weeks into it but we'll see how it goes the next goal is to attend a book club I'm like asking you guys to keep me accountable and make sure that I go I'm not gonna say like what book club I'm going to or when it is or anything just for like safety reasons I have a few on my radar and there's one that I did already sign up for but I think in the next week I'm gonna like make it a priority to decide to decide which one I truly want to go to so that I know which book I need to read. But I did sign up for one and I'm so nervous because I just don't want to go by myself because my worst nightmare socially is being alone in places where other people know each other and I'm like the loner. But I'm telling myself surely there will be other people there who are going by themselves for the first time too. But you never know. Maybe not. Maybe the same people always go to this book club and I'm just going to be the new person. I really just want to go to get out of my comfort zone socially, maybe meet some new people and it's something Thing where there's clearly a common interest when it comes to books so it kind of makes conversation a lot easier because that's something I struggle with with my social anxiety is just making conversation. I'm not really good with small talk. I can have the deepest of conversations with almost anybody, like intimate conversations, but I just don't do small talk well. I'm pretty sure that's a trait for INFJs if that's your personality type. Let me know if you relate because it's such a pain to feel like I can only have intimate conversation and it keeps me so shut off to so many people. I don't want to freak anybody out by like having really deep and intimate conversation but after only being friends with them for a little bit or only hanging out with 
with them a little bit. I just don't do small talk well. The next thing is to try a new restaurant in Houston. So we tried a new restaurant for Valentine's Day this month and it was so fine. Granted, it was like so expensive and we were like, wow, we see why we never eat out anymore. I do want to try a new restaurant though. It does not have to be like a nice occasion or anything like that or a super nice place. But I would love to try even if it's like a new fast casual place to us that's local. There's a cocktail bar that I'm dying to try that I've been dying to try since like November. So maybe we'll just do that. It doesn't really have to be a restaurant. I just want to try somewhere new in Houston. Even a coffee shop would be cool. The next thing is to finish the process of combining our finances. So we do have a joint savings and joint checking account finally set up. But it's kind of a process to like move your money into one place. And I'm in the process of getting like my business bank account fully set up with my new CPA and everything. And that's been a process because I had to like redo some things because of my name change. And we are totally just trying things out right now in terms of combining our finances. We did a lot of like researching on different ways to do it and the way that we found that really resonated with both of us was basically having all of our income go to a joint savings account and then we can have all of our bills go out of that account and then whatever's left over after all of our expenses we can split and put into our own checking accounts as sort of like the leftover money and then we can spend that however we want once all of our savings, taxes, and bills have been taken care of out of that joint savings account. And that's what we're going to try out. So with that being said, said I really hope we can get all that like solidified this month. I want to read two books which I will probably be finishing Air of Fire in early March at the latest. But if you've been watching my vlogs, you all know that I picked up the physical copy of Ruthless Vows. I got the physical copy because I went to a bookstore and I was just really in the mood to buy a book and read a physical book because I really want to slow down with reading. I feel like with the Kindle, the only thing I don't like is I really find myself just like speed reading sometimes and not really soaking things up. So I was like, let me get a physical book of something and read it. And I got this just because I've been meaning to get it for so long because I absolutely loved the first book in the series, Divine Rivals. It's amazing if you haven't read it. It's the perfect transitional fantasy book. If you're somebody who like wants to get into fantasy but you're nervous and scared about it, read Divine Rivals. It's amazing and romance but it's a little bit of fantasy. It reads like a historical fiction almost. There's like some war in it. Very very light world building but this is the second book in the series that recently came out and I really want to annotate a book for the first time as I read. I feel like I need to buy the physical copy of Divine Rivals too so I have both because it feels weird to only have one in the physical copy but I'm not worried about that right now. So this is definitely on my TBR for February and I'm not going to sit here and be overly ambitious about my TBR for March. It's honestly probably just going to end up being this and finishing Air Fire and maybe starting Queen of Shadows but I might end up choosing to read A Filthy Little Romance or something before I jump back into Queen of Shadows. The next thing is to refresh my closet. If you've been watching my vlogs then you also saw that I did like a little color analysis on myself. If you are on TikTok then you know that like doing getting your colors done is one of the like popular trending things right now so that you can see what colors work best with your skin tone, your undertones, your hair color, your eye color, all that stuff. And mine said I was an autumn. So this is like low key an autumn color. So it's supposed to be a color that's really good for me. But I kind of feel like I'm very borderline between like an autumn and a spring just because I feel like my undertones are not warm and my undertones are not cool. I just really feel like I'm strong neutral. But I really want to refresh my closet based on that. Maybe like thrift some things, look on Depop for some things that kind of match the colors that work fast with what ChatGPT said is best. I'll leave the TikTok link down below so I don't have to sit here and explain the whole process. Kind of just get rid of any clothes that I have not worn in the last year because I'm so bad about hanging on to things and telling myself, oh, but I'm going to be doing this this summer. I might wear it then. No, I just need to get rid of it. And last but not least, I have some decisions to make when it comes to just what I am doing in terms of my content creating, in terms of my career, in terms of next step. That probably makes it sound like I have a job offer and I'm potentially accepting it. And that's not true. I don't have any job offers. I've had zero interviews from like the 15 jobs I've applied for. I haven't even been selected for an interview, which is fine. I'm really trying to be super intentional and like take my time with starting a new job or trying something new because I really want to give content creating a full shot as I've mentioned a lot of times in my vlogs. But after just two months of doing this full time, I do know that it's not going to be my forever thing in terms of just doing this full time. Content creating full time is just difficult to me because it's very self-centered because everything I'm posting and doing is about myself and I know that as a content creator full-time I'm you know pushed to like link things a lot and do all this stuff and it just feels really unnatural to be like linking a million things a day and I really try to only like link things on my stories and in my videos and stuff if I really truly love them and care about them or if I use them and people have asked me about them it is very fulfilling because I do know that my content helps other people and inspires people in ways and that's because I intentionally try to create 
inspirational and motivational content you just lose a certain amount of peace when you monetize your life even if you don't want it to be that way everything kind of becomes about creating content and it's really hard to be off which is very eye-opening because I was really able to kind of like shut content creating off when I was working my full-time job because when I was working my full-time job I was like all in on it but now that content creating is my full-time job I'm realizing that it never really does turn off you can always do more no matter what you're doing it's an opportunity to create content almost and it's really hard to shut that off if you're somebody that's very determined and motivated if you're more of like a laid-back content creator then that's probably not true but for me it's really hard for me to just not want to film and capture everything. I'm not sitting here saying it's like a hard job and harder than normal nine to five and stuff. Trust me, it's not. It's just a different kind of mental and emotional strain that I am not used to with doing it full time. I mean, I'd love to branch it into something else and like have my own business. I mean, even if it was like a coffee shop in Houston, that would be amazing. I'm not saying that that's gonna happen or that I'm working on that. That's what I mean by doing something else. I'm not sitting here saying it needs to be related to my content creating. I'm just saying I would love to have some other business going on and this be a cre truly a creative outlet because I enjoy it most when it's when I'm doing it as a creative outlet. But I'm so blessed to be in the position I am and really be able to just try this out and give it a chance and take my time with what I'm doing next. But I do have some decisions to make this month because I'm kind of just reassessing where I'm at with certain things and asking myself if they're still serving me and what I want to do going forward and I've also had some opportunities kind of come to my plate that are kind of related to content creating but they're kind of part-time i know it's annoying to beat around the bush but i really don't want to share too much but i really also just wanted to like share my heart with where i'm at like when i have kids in the future i just don't see myself creating content in the same way i just don't see myself monetizing their lives and monetizing our life as a family that's just not something i'm interested in right now next segment of the video is things on my wish list first things business related and i really want to get a new full-size ring light because i don't have a full-size ring light i used to when i was in college i ended up donating it when we moved out of our last apartment which i don't really know why because i went from having a ton of natural light to basically no natural light but i donated it thinking i didn't really need it because i had all of these other ring light situations but none of them are full-size ring lights and for filming certain content I think it would be really beneficial if I did have a full-size ring light so I would like to get one and I would also like to get a high quality tripod for both my phone and my camera I love the tripod I have for my phone right now it like collapses into a little stick but I want one that can get aerial shots where my phone can lay flat and I can you know shoot everything from an aerial POV and same thing with my camera tripod I have a POS like $20 camera tripod from Amazon it's literally like the Amazon brand and I've had two of them and they both just break but it's probably because of the way I handle them I really want another pair of jeans and I have so many jeans in my closet so I need to go try them on and like take pictures of myself and all of them from a distance and like see what do I like and what do I not like about each pair of jeans because I feel like a lot of my jeans just don't really work with my body shape and my body type or I'm just like trying to fit into them and they don't really fit me anymore. And my girl Tay Crumbs, if you don't follow her, you should. She posted the Abercrombie low rise jeans on her Instagram and they looked so good on her. And I really want to try them out because I feel like low rise might could work with my body type, but also I have a long torso, so maybe not. I just need to go in store and try on a bunch of pair of jeans and then like figure it out. Am I going to buy some? Probably not. I'm the worst about like making a wish list and then never buying anything on it, which isn't the worst thing ever, but there are definitely things that I do impulse buy. So it makes up for it. Going off of that, I really want some Brandy Melville basics. I have had a cart on my computer on Brandy Melville's website for three weeks. Three weeks. I had some Brandy Melville things that I got from like Plato's Closet when I was in college and they were amazing quality even with being secondhand. Their prices are honestly so good for their quality. And we have a Brandy Melville here in Houston so I should honestly just go in person and try them on and see which things work. For some reason, that's I just can't get myself to spend the money on it but I've spent money on other things. I really want to get a new Kindle. I have some Amazon gift cards left over from when I was at my corporate job because I got some gift cards like at the end of busy season from some of my managers. They're kind of like just these awards they give you. I was planning on using them for the wedding and I completely forgot about them so I still have them and I think I want to get a Kindle Paperwhite because all this time I thought that I had a Kindle Paperwhite y'all so many people have been like what Kindle do you have what Kindle do you have and I'm like yeah I have the Kindle Paperwhite I got it Christmas of 2020 I just thought I had an old version of the Paperwhite no I recently found out that I have just the plain Kindle the basic Kindle so I want to get the actual Kindle Paperwhite because I was looking at like my screen compared to my mom's because my mom has the Paperwhite and one of my friends has the Paperwhite and I was looking at their screens and I was like, y'all have such bigger screens. You're actually 
actual Kindle is bigger and the trim around the screen is way thinner compared to mine. When I went and looked at the basic Kindle and what it looks like on Amazon, it made me realize that I do not have the paper white. So I've been lying to you guys on accident. But I'm also torn because I might get a new pair of workout shoes with the gift cards because I have been wearing my Adidas Ultra Boost as like my only workout shoes since 2019. I don't buy shoes very often. I'm somebody who like wears them out until they are done. I have a hole in like the big toe and it's not big enough to like impact me working out, but it will be soon. It just keeps stretching and getting bigger. So I want to get a new pair of workout shoes and I did buy a new pair of Nikes. If you follow me on Instagram, you're probably like, didn't you just get a new pair around Black Friday? Yes. I bought like the cheapest pair of Nikes I could find during Black Friday. They were like 60 bucks. I love them. I love the look of them, but I have come to accept that Nikes are not made for my feet. I am purely in between an eight and a half and a nine when it comes to Nikes athletic shoes, but it's weird because like in their dunks, eight and a half fit me. There's something about all of the athletic shoes I've ever bought from Nike that are meant for like training, running, that kind of thing, they can never fit me. I try an eight and a half, they're too small, and I try a nine and they're too big. So I just can't win. So with that, I'm kind of considering maybe getting a new pair of workout shoes. I've looked at like APLs and I've looked at getting just like a new pair of Ultra Boost because honestly, I love my Ultra Boost. They are so comfortable and they're so good for doing cardio days and strength days at 45. So let me know if you have APLs or Ultra Boost, maybe even a new pair of On Clouds because I have a pair of On Clouds, but I honestly haven't worn them in like two years. So I need to just like sell them, but they're like the OG, OG, OG version. And I think they're more so made for running and wouldn't be as great for strength training. So if you have like a specific pair of versatile workout sneakers that are like really good for strength training and cardio days, and don't say Hoka's because no, I love my Hoka's for like walking around everyday use, but not for F45. So if you've tried like APLs or new or ultra boost or newer on clouds let me and last but not least are two furniture items. We really want to get a new bed frame and headboard because our bed is on the floor and has been since we moved in here. Or we have it on box springs. So it's like the box spring is on the floor and it has like a cover on it. And then it's our mattress and we don't have a headboard or a bed frame, which is totally fine. It was our choice. We had a bed. We ended up getting rid of it just because it was broken and like the slats would never like stay in place and they'd always like fall out in the middle. But we still have the dresser and nightstands from that like bedroom set. So I really want a new bed frame and headboard board and we have so many Amazon gift cards and so many like random gift cards and stuff from our wedding that we have not spent so I'm kind of just trying to figure out what bed we want to get and what vibe we want in our room and then I really want to get a bistro table like I mentioned earlier for our dining room kitchen area because as of right now we literally just have the two bar stools in our kitchen and that's like the only seating we have for our whole kitchen and I really want to host more this year and we can't really do that with only being able to set two people. That is everything for my March reset. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Comment a green emoji emoji in the comments if you made it to the end. Thank you all so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe if you aren't already and turn on post notifications. Follow me on social media, link down below, and I will see you all in my next video. Thanks for watching.